Hillsong pastor Carl Lenz was fired late last week because he cheated on his wife. Now rather than bashing him or gossiping about this, I actually want to draw three powerful points from this sad situation that we can learn from that will help us in our lives. This is the Melvin Sandlin Show. If you are new to this channel, we make videos that provide you with practical lifestyle and Bible guidance for your daily life. If that is something that you are into and want, make sure to subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on our new videos. Now, late last week on November 4, Brian Houston, the founder of Hillsong, fired Carl Lentz. And here's the quote for the reason why. It says, for leadership issues and breaches of trust, plus a recent revelation of moral failures. And what those moral failures are, Carl Lentz on his own Instagram page is actually expanding on that in a rather lengthy explanation of what has happened that we are going to look at. And he starts with, our time at Hillsong, New York City has come to an end. So Hillsong is a church that was founded in Australia, now has grown all over the world. It has a weekly attendance of 150,000 people. And in 2010, the New York side of the branch of Hillsong got set up by Carl Lentz. And over time, it's been growing. And now it has about 10,000 in weekly attendance. And it's drawing quite some celebrities as well, like one of the Kardashians or Selena Gomez or the Jenners. And Carl Lentz is actually known for his ties with Justin Bieber, whom he actually baptized. And I know that there's a lot of criticism on Carl Lentz and on Hillsong. And I too, I disagree with what they are teaching and the way that they are doing things. But this time, this is not an opportunity to exploit. This is not a time to spread hate and gossip and point out how wrong they are. This is a time when we are supposed to be praying as Christians. You know, as Christians, we know that the Bible teaches that the flesh is weak. And Carl Lentz is not excluded from that Bible verse. It doesn't matter whether you are famous or a pastor. We are all struggling with the temptations that are all around us. We're part of a spiritual war. So when someone falls, the last thing we should do is to push them down further, especially publicly, maybe even to get likes from other people. That's terrible. We shouldn't be doing that. We should see how can we lift him up. So the first point that I want to make is no matter that you disagree with him or Hillsong Church, this is a time where as Christians, as brothers and sisters, we are to be praying for Carl Lentz and his family. Before we move on to the next two points, I just want to take some time to say thank you to all our donors. Because of you, we can make these videos. And because of your generosity, lives are actually being changed. Listen to this comment that we got in just this week from Lourdes Neves. Probably mispronounced that name, apologies for that. She says, I shared this video with my middle school students during Bible class. You broke it down and spoke in words that they could easily understand. Thank you. It was an absolute blessing. May the Lord continue to bless you, Mrs. N. Friends, this is why we do what we do. This is why we are making videos and this is what you are giving to. If you are not yet a donor and you want to give a donation and support the work, you can go to thechristianlife.com slash donate and become a monthly donor or give a one-time donation. Thank you again. It's really appreciated and it's making a difference. The post continues and he says, over the years, I did not do an adequate job of protecting my own spirit, refilling my own soul and reaching out for the readily available help that is available. When you lead out of an empty place, you make choices that have real and painful consequences. So for years, he's not been taking care of his own personal connection with God. He's been preaching and maybe you've listened to one of his sermons, but what is behind that sermon? Apparently it was emptiness. It was a lack of personal time with God. Yet probably no one noticed a thing because he seemed so on fire and so passionate. You know, a friend neighbor of ours actually told us this week a story of how their family, they hiked up to a mountaintop and there was another family there and they were arguing. The father apparently wanted to take a selfie photo, but the children were not so keen on doing that. One of the children was screaming, no, no, I don't want to go in the photo. And this went on for some time. But eventually they got their photo and it made me think that probably they put that photo on Facebook or Instagram or somewhere where other people see it and might think, oh, that must have been a nice family time. Or maybe they even go further and they 
look on their own lives and they might be jealous and say, why don't I have a family? Why can't we afford to go on vacation? And one picture can say so many things without us actually knowing what really happened behind the scenes. You know, I can actually personally relate to that, that as I look back on my journey and the ministry work that I've been doing, the videos or preaching or all these things, my faith during that time hasn't always been as strong. My relationship with God, my daily devotions, but that's not the part that you see. And that is why it's so important for every single one of us to have that personal connection with God, that daily experience in His Word, that study, that knowing what the Bible says. You know, there's nothing wrong with following people and having them as role models and being inspired by them. But that shouldn't be the only thing. You should have as the foundation, you should have your own faith, your own understanding of Scripture, your own relationship with God, so that when this person that you look up to, when they start teaching something that isn't right, or when they make bad lifestyle choices, or when they fall for sin, that it doesn't affect your faith, that you have this discernment so you can protect your faith and it doesn't fall as others might fall. It's so important to build your faith, not on other people, but on Jesus. You can be inspired by other people, you can be rebuked by other people and challenged and all these things and those are great, but you need to have that personal time with God, that personal connection with Him. Reading on, he shares, I was unfaithful in my marriage, the most important relationship in my life and held accountable for that. This failure is on me and me alone and I take full responsibility for my actions. Now over the last week, different allegations have been made as people stepped forward. There's this woman who reportedly said that she's been having an affair with him for five months. There's been former Hillsong leaders that stepped forward and said that for years they had been uh, telling people that Carl Lenz was doing this, sleeping with other people. Now, the thing is we don't know what is true. And at this point, it doesn't really matter. We know what he has said. He's been unfaithful in his marriage. And that just shows that how sexual immorality, the Bible warns us over and over again for this, it's because it's so prevalent in our world today. And even in our churches, it's something that we really need to guard for. And you might hear the story from Carl Lance being unfaithful and you're like, how is this possible? This is so bad. How can you sleep with someone else? And you know, true, it, it is bad by all means. But I think it's also a good opportunity for us to reflect on our own lives because Jesus teaches that unfaithfulness isn't only sleeping with someone else. It's actually when you already look at a woman with lust, you've committed adultery. Sexual immorality and unfaithfulness, according to the Bible, isn't only sleeping with someone else. It's watching pornography, masturbation, thinking about other people with lust, having desires for relationships that are not approved of by the Bible. It's big and a lot of people are struggling with it. I've been struggling with it. You know, we actually put up a poll on our YouTube community wall asking who is struggling with sexual sin and more than 75% of you have responded that this is something that you struggle with. And this is something where you really need to seek help immediately when you can identify in your actions, your thoughts or feelings that, whoa, I'm drifting towards something I shouldn't. You should look for help. And we actually, we put some links in the description below to some resources that might help you in your walk. But it starts with us needing to own up to it, to take responsibility for it. And that's hard, but it doesn't help you to hide it or try to ignore it or wait until you're caught. You need to seek help immediately when you see those signs. I love what Job says in chapter 31 verse 1, I have made a covenant with my eyes. Why then should I look upon a young woman? And this actually, this verse inspired me to throw out a challenge to you for the next week for seven days to stay pure. No pornography, no masturbation, no thinking about other people with lust, no second looking at that pretty person that walks by to stay pure. And memorize this verse that every time when you feel tempted, you can say, you can pull it up from memory and you're like, no, I've made a covenant with my eyes. I'm gonna stay pure. If you want to participate in this challenge, then comment below, I claim victory over sexual sin. You know, I know that it is hard. Maybe you've tried before 
I know I've struggled with this personally. So allow me to encourage you with another Bible verse in Jude 1 verse 24. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling, Jesus, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Friends, you can do this together with God. Thank you for watching the very first episode of the Melvin Sandlin Show. If you liked it, make sure to give us a thumbs up and also go down to the comment section and just write some encouraging words to all the people who would participate in this seven day purity challenge. Also, again, I want to say pray for Carl Lenz and his family. I think we can all imagine the hard time that they are facing right now, especially being public figures. Everyone has an opinion and there's a lot of bad stuff out there. So please pray for them, for protection, for restoration, for forgiveness, for God's will to be done. And friends, it's never been easier to share God's word with others. At the bare minimum, it takes a few clicks and you can share this video with your friends. So be an evangelist, be a sharer. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Maranatha.